Jamaica. Percy Gray was of English heritage, which makes it interesting to me that he painted in watercolors as much as he did. I think the English watercolor tradition was carried on in his family. Many of the California regional painters worked in oil, but he worked in oil and switched very early on his career to being primarily a watercolor. Most of the literature will tell you that he changed his signature from block letters into the script signature in 1910. So we know it has to be after 1910. It's pretty hard to date it more specifically than to say it was painted between 1910 and the end of his life around 1950. There's a consistency to his style during that period. Another thing you have going on with Gray, which I think is interesting, is that rather than being one of those brilliantly colored California Impressionist painters, he painted more of what's called a tonalist style, which is the more muted, dreamier, softer, quieter style. And there's a lot of interest in tonalism in America now. As far as the value is concerned, if you were to see this picture at auction today, I suspect the estimate would be somewhere in the $10,000 to $15,000 range. I beg your pardon? Between $10,000 and $15,000. Uh, I hope that's not a disappointment. <laughs> Watercolors by Gray have sold an option for as much as $50,000, but they tend to be quite a bit larger and somewhat more colorful than this. Wow. I have no idea. Let's go to another one here. painting was a gift to my wife's mother and father in 1938. I know it's done by a California artist or artist who painted in California, Percy Gray, who I understand was a plein air painter and part of a school or a group of artists that moved to the Carmel Valley or somewhere in that part of California and painting. My wife received it from my mother and father when they died and she was reading their wedding gift registry. We came across this, this item in the painting being given in 1938. Well, it's a lovely piece, and Percy Gray certainly is a California painter. I think there are two important things to keep in mind with Percy Gray is that he took training from William Merritt Chase, one of the most important of the American Impressionists. And the other thing is that he spent years as a newspaper illustrator. Wow. And wow. during that time, as you would imagine, back then, that you would have to get things down quickly, and you'd have to get them down accurately. You would need a real spontaneity to your work in order to be a successful newspaper illustrator. Percy Gray worked for a very long time and was very prolific in a very similar style. So from the teens and 1950, he's doing the same work. He said it was a gift in 38. This could well be a work from 38, but it could just as well have been done in 28. Oh. So this work, like much of Percy Gray's most famous work, was done in California. It's the sort of rolling green hills and oaks with the California wildflowers. This is the quintessential Percy Gray. In real estate, we talk about location, location, location. For watercolors, it's condition, condition, condition. And in this case, it's in really spectacular shape. And in particular, what we're focusing on is saturation, color. And the blues and the yellows are really vibrant, as well as the greens, which are really dark and saturated. It's a cloudy day, and he likes to paint in that kind of situation. And because of the condition, and specifically because of that saturation, I would say an auction right now is worth on the order of twenty to $30,000. Wow, terrific. The other interesting thing about this is that it's still in its original frames. It's a wonderful presentation. Usually at this point, they're long gone. Well, thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. So the one thing that was interesting, he said that the, um, oh, <laughs> I'm blanking now. <laughs> um, he did say something interesting. And we talked about, oh yeah, the, um, <clears throat> Your yellows will fade the fastest. So, you know, in later times, you, you know, something to consider. Maybe getting very high quality yellows. So. The printmaker hopes I. Yeah. I, I just love his work, but it was a long time before I saw one where the yellows were faded. And wow. I, didn't, I didn't like it because it was so bright yellow. 
Oh. <laughs> Is that framed under glass, do you think, Rob? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they didn't have the, uh, the kind of glass or we have that, uh, uh, the plexi that's sort of the treated, so it has uh, yeah. like some in, uh, inhibitors in it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, that, that'll also help. Here's another. It's very large, like watercolor by Percy Gray. What do you have this hanging in your home? I have it over an antique desk. Is it in the light at all? No. Now, where was it? You know, by the way, you just don't see watercolors like this. Pretty rare. All that, look at all the tonal tones. That's why they call them the tonal. It's very muted tones. They're sort of yellow, green, reds. Um, you know, that's usually a, an oil painting that you see that's this, not only tonal, but subtle. It's, it's just kind of, a, it's hard to tell whether that's an oil painting or you gotta get right up to it and see. Yeah, he really had good control of his watercolor, didn't he? Yeah, he just he had, a, he had a pretty unique style, even though it's very formal, you know, it, it's, you just don't see very many people working like that. Do you think he used small brushes? No, no, I, I can tell he works it. You can tell he controls his masses. I mean, he might use small brushes for some of the branches and things, but he's, he's very, he's a very generalized painter. He, he works in big, big areas very, very well. He's, con, he's quite the conductor. Huh? Yeah. He's, he's, this is not a noodle painting. It, it probably might look like it though, but he's not a, yeah. There are no videos of him teaching, I guess, huh? I don't know if he teaches. I don't know if he's uh, yeah. no. demonstrating, in other words. Yeah. You know, well, he, well, he's quite a, quite a while ago, I think. I don't know when he passed away, but. Uh, 1952. Oh, yeah. 18, 1869 to 1952 were his dates. It was by my dad. I don't think it got any natural light either. See, if you, if you just take this big, the big masses of color up in here, see, it's just a wash and he'll come in and hit, hit a few little, little subtle breaks in there. And then he just really, he's, he's a master of letting, letting the big area do the work. So look over here, this is just one big color. That he came in and threw in a couple of little shadows in. We'll, we'll get into that today. Making those big masses work for you. By the way, also look at the light, the light areas. They'll always have a, a silhouette of a dark branch in there. And then he'll counter that with the dark areas. He'll have a light, light branches in there. And that's usually what, when, you, when you look at trees, that's what you see. He's quite the designer, though. Okay. Heard of this piece? Yeah. What, what do you know about Percy Gray? I know he loved the California landscape and painting eucalyptus trees. Okay. Well, Percy Gray was in, is, is correct, the California painter. He was born in San Francisco in 1869, and he lived out there pretty much. Uh, did some work as an illustrator in New York in the early part of the century, then came out and did uh, a lot of the natural landscape of um, California, particularly the eucalyptus trees and the oaks and the cypress that out there. This is one of the largest ones you can possibly have. Really? In the world of watercolors, we have something called a full sheet. Okay. And a full sheet is about 30 by 22 inches. Now, if you have things that are cut in half or quarters and 14 by 11 or something or 15 by 11, but this is almost 30 inches and about 22 wide. So you couldn't get a much larger Percy Gray book. Okay, so I asked why you had it because it's in very good condition. Good. Every watercolor is faded, some, but some more than others. But what makes no a good one is to see the colors, the richness of the colors you see in the, the greens here, but also these blues right. that you get here. Blue is one of the most highly fugitive colors and, all, and frequently goes away. So you get these blues all the way down through here. It's signed on here, Percy Gray, 1932. So we know at that time he had a studio in Monterey. Okay. So it's probably about the northern central coast area. Did you have a frame you had no. before? No, I think my grandfather framed it. Then maybe a little bit after the business. It's frosted oh, okay. glass. Okay. I think it may have happened in the 60s or 70s. And I don't like the frost guys. You can't really see it as well. You notice that? I would recommend maybe switching that out. 
going into a framer and getting ultraviolet filtered plexiglass. Oh, wow. This will keep the ultraviolet light out and keep it in, in, in better okay. shape. Also, if it falls off the wall, right. it doesn't break. Right. If this breaks, then the glass will cut the image. Now, have you ever had it appraised? No. Right now, we probably put an auction estimate of twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars. Oh no! Oh, that's great. Oh, I've always loved this piece. So nice to know it's worth so much. Oops! So there you go. Okay. So I thought those were very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's also interesting that um, the style didn't change much. I, I've never seen him go from one style to another. I've only seen the same. I, and that way, uh, I can when I when I'm looking at work and I see a first day gray, I don't even have to. I don't have to look at the signature. I mean, it's it's all over the painting. It's just got a very unique way of working. But they do call this tonalism. <clears throat> Didn't one of the commentators say he has had this style since he was a teenager? Uh, I, I, I don't I don't know about that. Uh, I, I thought I heard that. No. Wow. Okay, so let's get into the... Uh... So he definitely, is, is, you know, with, you're talking about California watercolors, you, you got to talk about Percy Gray being one of the early ones. Okay, let's, um, I'll do, a, I'll do one here. Really playing up on the vertical on this. Can't be more vertical than that. Can you zoom in on it? Now, if you just look at this, this, this whole top, almost the half, almost halfway, it's mostly orange. I would just kind of break into the sides here, a couple of little holes of blue in there, a, a hole of blue in here, kind of comes up the side. <clears throat> so this is just all, I mean, it's an orange and blue painting, see, complementary. Generally speaking, it, it's, that's what, I would, that's what I would call it. So let's see, we got a mountain and another mountain, or shall I say hills? These trees will get closer together as they get further away. Shadows. This is what I'm talking about. He is a master of mass. And look at, he loses this whole, all the foliage. It's, 
it's a very loose loose mass of color so let's um you know i've seen some of his oil paintings too by the way they're masterful they, <laughs> it, i don't know why i didn't do more of them but wow He's allergic to oil materials. Yeah. Yeah, I read that too. He had a, developed an allergy to the oil aging solvents. Oh. How about that? That makes sense. Okay, so let's get this in here. I'm just going to avoid these areas in general. Gonna draw a little bit lighter. Avoid that area. That's where we'll throw some little dark, dark silhouettes through. and all this tone. And of course back here, right. It's a little bit darker in front of it. And then again, these big chunks of, I mean, dead grass, which is just kind of a rusty mass of color. You can just treat it like that too. One big area. See, look what we have here. I mean, and it, it's not even that much different than the actual painting. I mean, he's very loose, much, much more than you think. Um, you could tell he was trained by William Mary Chase because, because of the, the font, the, I can see the foundation in his work is very clear. Fundamentals, in other words, this this whole idea of designing with mass. <clears throat> okay, uh, we've got here. We've got some light. Um, lighter trunks and then we get to the darker ones I like some shadows in there too so on some of these lighter ones maybe i could just kind of scratch that out no i don't want to we can get that a little bit darker right around them just good to note and it needs to get a little darker anyway in some of the shadowy areas. So 
on this big ball of foliage here. The underplane of it is in shadow. See, then he just leaves the upper plane in light. Same here. The underplane, all of this, the underplane is in shadow. And, that's, and the top part kisses the light. Now let's, let's make a note of, of some of these dark, dark on light. Branches. Do you think the branch that's coming from the lower right through the center of the LA, does that look like it was scraped? Yeah. Were lifted? Sure does. A lot of these light ones do, yeah. Wow, that means that it all was pretty wet then. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me if it could be so much faster than you think. Oh. Which makes it, you know. Um. You know, though, there's ways of doing that that you don't have to do it. You can reactivate an area with a little bit of water and and scrape into it. You just, you know, think about how many of these he did. So he obviously knows, knows his stuff. Um, all docks in there. I don't know if I can get those. My this paper just doesn't want to do it. I don't think that they. Um, reactivate an area and just kind of um, a little bit. Few of those. At this scale, though, probably be better just to do it with some white. Just, just to make a, little, a couple of little notes that we have light on dark in a few little areas. Not too many, but maybe back in there. So, you know, dark on light, light on dark. And basically a complementary painting. I mean, it's orange and blue. Little violet. Maybe. Yellow and violet, who knows? We can come up with some of those darker areas like along this side here. A couple of these shadows along the left sides. Left side here. And the shadows. Stages the painting. Notice it's a little darker in the corner. Keeping the eye in. Even the front has a little subtle shadow over the front. See? All of these are good good reasons to do these studies. I like the texture that he added to the left and right corner of yeah. the grasses, kind of right. like your eye stuff. Isn't that great? Nice, yeah. And yeah, when you really look at it, it's not that much. He does a little dry brushing on his trunk, a little. It's not as much as you think. That's that's really the, the mark of a um, advanced painter. Is when they do little things that make you think that there's a lot going on when there really isn't. And it allows them 
to get away with the beauty of the stroke and the wash and the mark by being simpler, they, they show off more of that rather than picky picky render render, you know. Okay. Looking pretty good here. Okay. Now, move on to a color. Just and so he look, look, he keeps his horizon way down here. Horizons very low. Maybe up there. We'll just draw it a little bit differently this time. Let's start off with the front things. And the bottoms are on there. This one's up a little higher and a little further in. We have a neat fence here. It's, do you notice that full fence is almost, on the top of it, it's almost flat. In other words, it's not going really uphill or downhill, maybe a touch uphill. And the, the reason why is because it's right on the horizon. So that, that tells you about where it is. So we'll just say it's, it's approximately there. Mountain here, the trees. Another one in the back. Trees, very faded hills back here. And we can kind of go into whoops. No. Taking that up a little higher. Really, what I'm really, I'm not really drawing the orange part, I'm drawing the blue part. The little negative shapes really explain the whole thing. I like how it goes with this strong orange, this really faded blue in the back. That really just really pushes the um, the distance. And that's interesting that the lady said that he, he preferred these um, more, not foggy days, but maybe a little more overcast or with the more subtle colors. I mean, this one doesn't look like that, but because usually a California impressionist wants these bright, you know, really bright. Okay. You know, I hope this one till we start off with a little bit of a I'll go with the uh, ultramarine blue. Up in here. And it gets a little lighter.
Not only does it get lighter as it gets toward the horizon, but can you see it get a little bit warmer? So yeah, this bits of yellow and which is instantly gonna kind of make it look a little greener. I'll go with the lemon yellow. Oh, let's try the um, the cad yellow. See which one looks best. That doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad at all. That's a little strong. Let's look at blue. Yeah. Just a little bit darker. Procedure. Now, I think I'm going to work on some of these background mountains here. So, a light, I would say, kind of a bluish lavender. So, ultramarine blue plus ultramarine blue plus um, magenta. Okay. I'm thinking myself. I'm thinking myself or reminding myself. Actually, I was thinking George, because George was about ready to tell me. I know you were. <laughs> You're making me laugh. But, the trouble with this class is you can't hear all of us laughing. Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking myself. <laughs> um, actually, I was. I was sitting, I'm, I'm in my head thinking, George, I'm thanking you for reminding me. Because you're like you're like this little angel sitting on my shoulder right here, Rob. Now um, it's called magenta. Okay. Thank you for calling me an angel, rather rather than a nuisance. A nuisance. Bits of ultramarine blue back here. It really gets pretty kind of quite strong in there too. And then this foreground mountain here it gets a bit a bit bluer. But as you can see, my value right there, it's not quite dark enough. So it's still ultramarine blue and and the uh, magenta, but I'm going to go with a little more ultramarine blue in it, which will darken it. And that's probably what we're seeing here. And it just kind of fades out. I could even see that darker. Again, a lot of it's blue. He, he takes a lot of these blue grays up in between these trees and just sort of defines them. Oh, it's almost supposed to be orange. And a lot of that blue will just get faded into other colors as you mix. Uh, let's see now. A lot of orange in this piece, so grab some orange, cad red, cad yellow, and to mute that, I would probably just use a little bit of ultramarine blue. I mean, very little. I'm painting the light tone, not the shadow, but you can paint right over the shadows. And we'll just glaze in our shadows over that. Let's 
That's a pretty strong orange. I thought it was more muted than that. So if I want to mute it a little bit more, just add a little bit of blue. See what that does? Let me get the arm. Yellow ochre would also mute it, wouldn't it? The orange? Yeah. I mean, um, I think it would give a little variation, but remember orange, I mean, the complement will mute it. Yeah, but there's probably some blue and yellow ochre. Oh yeah, yeah, and there's probably yellow ochre in there. I wouldn't be surprised. He's got very subtle tones going on all through there. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he's throwing things like, you know, that are a little bit. So if you took red, yellow, and blue, mix them together, you'll get kind of a yellow ochre. Also that quinacridone uh, gold. Oh, yeah. Look at you the quinacridone gold. We're definitely working here. You have that. Don't you have it too? Yeah, that's it right there. I just put it down there. That's good stuff. It's a little strong by itself, so um, I would go with the magenta and ultramarine blue to mute it down. Wow, that really mutes down nicely. Look at that. I think you got it, George. <laughs> uh, so that was quinacrid on gold mixed with ultraviolet blue and magenta. So basically it's a yellow and a violet. And you can get something pretty close to that muted tone with a yellow and a violet. My print looks actually, I mean, I, I don't have it up on the screen, the JPEG, I just, I printed it out. There looks like there's some green in the middle. Is, is that? Right here? Yes. You know, I see something greenish in there, yeah. Yeah. You will get subtle greens if you mix, just, just lean more toward the, um, if you're using quinacridone gold, just, just put more of that in there with the ultramarine blue. I just kind of, I call it leaning the color. In other words, I'll add more blue to the color. It's tough because I'm making a, a violet, but in, in, in this case, maybe more of a blue violet will give me what I want. It's bluer back here, so I'm gonna so I'm going to go a little bit more with the, the ultramarine blue back here. My photo shows more of a, a greenish blue. In here? Uh, well, at the lower hills or mountains, yeah, but it, I'm sure it doesn't matter. You mean in the mountains? I'm seeing a lot of violet. Above, above the horizon. Yeah, yeah, you, then we get to something a little bit greener in this area, in front of these mountains. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I'll... I have a color called peacock blue. and. You I'm, can't use that. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure you know all about those peacocks, huh? Yeah. They're all around your house. Um, we've got a lot of them around my house, too. I don't know where they came from because I, 
Yeah. Um, well, and then suddenly out of nowhere, I'm getting all these peacocks. Yeah, over here, I'm sure. Because Lucky Baldwin, the guy that owned the Arboretum property, supposedly in the late 1800s, imported them from India. Oh, okay. Wow. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. I've been here a long time. I've got a long history of peacocks because my, my, I used to go visit my grandma. And just nothing but peacocks around her house. This is a little kid. I always thought they were so cool. All right, so we got. I don't want to get. But I had heard that South Pasadena wanted to relocate them. Oh, have you heard that? People got upset, huh? Uh, I haven't heard that. Okay. I just saw one the other day. My, my daughter and I were, <clears throat> were walking and I saw a whole bunch of them running across the street. And I think people were getting a little upset. They were honking at them. And they were taking a sweet time getting across the street. And then in front of that, I come over the redder fence here. A little bit. It makes this fence very light. And something like that. And mine's kind of wet. And some orange into the trees. Going to the blue, blue violet family of colors. So again, that's the ultramarine with the, uh, oh, with the uh, magenta right here. And on the left side, just hit, hit yourself some shadow. He gets quite blue in there too, doesn't he? Huh. He's pretty famous for it in his darks. In some of these darks, hitting some real Kind of saturated ultramarine blue or cerulean blue or something like that, where it kind of makes the dark look more, um, just gives it a little bit of interesting color. Um, on the ground, too. You can really see the blue on the ground. And I think that's pretty good for a color up. Oh, a little bit of warmth on these trees. It's really easy to get caught up into these rocks, but I think that's enough work. So much going on in it. Oh, yeah. Ah. There's a little marks there. Do, 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 do. I'm going to put some of those in. That's how I'm going to do them. Right up in there. It's gonna be fun. No, I didn't bother hitting any of the darks over the hit these. I'll hit a couple. It's a it's a good thing to know just to use those lights. That's where you're gonna see a dark branch. And then where you have a dark area, 
that's where you're going to see the light branch. If you know. It's nice that he has that little diagonal because we have all this vertical. I think what he's trying to do is break break up all those verticals with some subtle, you know, diagonals. I'm going to guess that's what he's doing because that's what I do. Dark and I'll just leave a little reference marks like that just to tell myself, yeah, that'd be a good place to get a little white. All right. And I could have got even more muted with that. Wow. Pretty muted tone. Okay. Get a photo of that. Let's see. Zoom out. There you go. What is the Blue. That's like at the end of the road and sideways from that. It looks like blue trees. Um, Here? Full blue mass, and it's not hills. It's higher than the hills, and it's darker than the sky. And is that for tunnelism? This? Uh, what? Uh, no, all be this? Between, yeah, all of that. And if you look in the photo, it's, it's wide and high, and it's darker than the sky. And, I think it's just he's just losing it into a a misty void. Yeah, I think that's the tunnelism. Misty void. Yeah. Okay. Right beside the grassy knoll. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Ah. Okay. Right Where's the top? Where's the bottom? Okay. Now I like um, let's just kind of figure out where we want our horizon line to be. I'll start it from here and just kind of the road. Can you go wider now? Yes, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Can be, yeah, can be the end of the road would be there. Um, fence. I'll take a look at that later. From here to here, yeah, that tree is quite a distance over. I can draw it darker for you. You know, a lot of times when I draw these, I'm, I'm, I'm a little vague. I'm not exactly sure. I'm kind of just scribbling in the beginning, trying to figure out where I want to put things. And the other one. It's pretty close to the side. There's a lot of height out of this. There's a kind of a bit of a gap in between these two. And maybe the bottom is right there. Maybe the bottom of this is around there. 
it got up a little higher than this. Oh, it's getting out. Yeah, something like that. Okay, another tree, one, two, and then they just, just start overlapping each other. They're so close to each other, you can hardly see any gap in between. We have these, these two big ones here in the front, and then we have these three here. lost into a fog. So it might be a good idea to just contour a little bit because I can help you. Try to get them skinnier as they get higher up. It's kind of hard sometimes on these large eucalyptus. Then we come down. Um, okay, so here we have some trees, a red tree here. Some more. A little bit higher, maybe a darker blue violet mountain. Yellow. Just, you, really, you don't really see any. It's so vague back there, you really don't even see any tops. Looks like some clouds moving in here. This is real misty. And that allows me to, so from here to here, I can see these, this foliage. about that high off the mountain. You know, something like that. We've got a little hole in there. Another hole in there. And another one around here. Back to the contour again. Don't want to get too lost there.
So the, all these are, are the little blue negative spaces in there. There's a couple more down here to them. Rolling. Those little negative spaces can be really helpful on positioning things. Just you know, helping to find yourself. Where are? Where am I? You know. Here. Now we did do the um, I kind of forgot which one we did well first. <laughs> did I start off with the orange or did I start off with the blue? Oh, whatever. Um, I do like that ultramarine blue and the you started, you started off with the, the sky oh, sorry, yeah. the sky hole with the blue sky yeah. hole. Because that's where I was going to start. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And so ultramarine blue, mostly. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he doesn't use a absolutely pure color, but something ultramarine bluish. I think my ultramarine blue is a little stronger than that, but let's see. Yeah. So we'll get lighter down here. A little lighter. Toward the horizon, I'm just adding water and a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow. Okay. 
that's a, that's a lot. I'm just going to leave it and see what happens. See these uh, violet mountains here. I'll use ultramarine blue with a little bit of magenta. Oh, here it gets a, quite a bit bluer, so and lighter. This one here, um, a bit darker. I'm still using the ultramarine blue and magenta. And if you want to gray it a little bit, just add a little bit of that cad yellow to it. So it's not pure. You know, the, the toneless are really into the muted, muted tones. And, you know, when I, when I first started landscape painting, I had a friend who was just a, quite a genius. Um, and uh, he taught me a lot about toneless. He was a toneless. Because I was more into just really dynamic color. Not, not so much into the really subtle, subtle colors. I changed my mind on that. Rob, yeah. The blue in the, the sky blue in the lower part of the picture in the trees, it's a darker blue because of the density of the leaves. Up here? No, lower. You see blue. Oh, you mean in the tree? Yeah. Yeah. The density yeah. of the leaves, because it's still the same sky blue, right? Um, it's just. Oh, are you talking about? Yeah. It's, it's the, the, in the photo, it, the blue the from sky. the horizon up maybe halfway through the leaves of the tree is a darker blue. You know, isn't that weird? Sometimes the artist will make the tree the they'll make the blue that's coming through the, um, the tree a little bit darker than it is out in the sky. And the reason why is because there's so much, so many things interfering, it'll make the blue appear a little bit darker. Yeah. Um, that, that's probably what I would say he's doing there. Uh -huh. I, I you know when we used to do murals, we would use that trick all the time. Because if you make the sky exactly the same, it, it's really bright when it comes to the trees. So we, we would knock it back a little bit. Um, just interesting how that works. It's, it's one of those things that artists do um, To, to calm a painting down because maybe it's too shocking in an area so they'll mute it down and then so many artists are doing it it just it becomes a not a rule but a, 
a thing to look out for, which is what that's where rules start. Okay. Uh, well, how about some of that orange back in here? Let's do that. So, yeah, so if you want to use that quinacridone yellow in some of these areas, and that's a little strong, but so I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that. But if you want to use a little quinacridone in, in some of these areas, that, that could be really nice. Oops. Orange. I don't really know what's going on back here. I'm just going to mute that out a little bit. And when you mix those blues and oranges, you're just going to get a series of grades. And then you can choose, pick and choose how much of, uh, how much gray you want to show. Like maybe in this area, I wanted more, more orange. So I can just punch a little bit more orange in that area or something. That was a lot, so I can pull it back. I'll just add a little blue to that and knock it back. So it's really obviously we don't have the kind of time he had to do this. Let's see. But We will do what we can. I'll just use a little water on the edge if it gets too. If it gets too tight, I'll just loosen up the edge by adding a little water. Get here on the bottom too. Got some field. I'm gonna go ahead and make my field a little, a little more gray than the fence. I'm going to go into that grass with the first sort of light yellowy orange. And so this is what I'm talking about. I, you know, even that would have been more of a mute, muted color for me when I used to paint back in those days in the early 90s. I would, I would have thrown it in more like, you know, like that, you know. But my friend would have said, no, 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 please. Yuck. No, so what you do is, I tend to like that kind of thing, but um, I still do. But if we have an orange, okay, and we'll do what the totalists are doing. 
we add blue and mute that right down. See, that's, that's what they're doing. And they're very, very, very much into nature because if you look at natural colors, they're usually pretty muted. You just have to figure out what you like and that could change over time or from day to day, you know, really. There are certainly artists out there that do everything. Look at these little pockets of blue shadows he's getting down in here. Wow. Those are great. We could cue in them later. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like he's kind of opaquing them on after. Oh, wonderful. I look strong. Gosh. Okay. I look at it down here. It doesn't look strong at all. I look up there and it looks pure red. It is not that red when I, where I am. From my vantage point, it, it still looks good, whatever it is. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, George. It's like having a, an art therapist. <laughs> I'm laughing. It is. It is. A, isn't it therapy? I mean, I don't care. Even if it is hard, it's a hard study. You get, you just get lost in it, you know? Love it. Who cares if it's hard? And who cares what it looks like when you're done? What matters is the what you walk away with. obviously much more subtle than this. He comes in with these beautiful little little blues to it. I just I want to throw a few of those in there. And I'll come back later and drop a couple of more opaque kind of blues. And I'm not sure how he's getting them. He might be, I wonder if he's adding a little white to them. Ooh. But like sometimes the like a cerulean blue will have a little white in it. There are certain blues that already have a little bit of something in them. So. Great. And let's get some of that orange. On the trees. Orange trees coming up. How would you like them? Fried or over easy? On this side, do some dry brushing. Oh. 
little more stout than that. And get another. You can get some serious color on these trees too. There's some white in those trees. Fish. You know, I think that quinacridone yellow would work real well. These three back there, they're more, they're more muted, so just keep adding a little bit more blue to your orange. And then we'll gray them back here. And then just, just goes into 100,000 little trees back there. Or 10. Zoom into this back part here. We just have a lot of kind of bluish grays going on back here. It really gets quite blue in some of these areas. So you'll see artists cut in between areas like that to develop trees like that. That's what he's doing. He's, cut, he's cutting them in natively. Oftentimes, you can tell it just it just becomes a All these are just lost into what appears to be a whole lot of trees back there. Make it a little bit bluer by adding more, more ultramarine to it and then setting it around this tree. That will make that tree really stand out so later on I may, I may have to throw another little tone over it.
see kind of reddish tones up in there, yellowish. You're just getting a smorgasbord of positive and negative shapes in there. sky so I need to get much more orange with that. I have some serious So, yeah, I'm starting this color off be saturated. If I work a little bit of blue into it, that just grays it immediately. I can take a few of those and just kind of just a couple of leaves outside the mass. It's just orange and blue, cad, red, cad yellow, cad red, ultramarine blue.
It's just one big mass. You know, and he, mine are kind of cut out looking. He does a really good job of keeping his edges a little bit, a little bit softer than mine. So if you want to just take a little water around the edge, you can do that. On the inside. Stronger. Orange. No. It's just a, a. It's just how much of each. So I, I thought I needed a little more orange, so I had a little bit more red and yellow to it. Yeah, you know, I thought that that would dry darker than that. I could come back and hit those a little bit darker. The. Um, The little sky holes in there. Yeah. <clears throat> In these darker areas, I'm just using blue and a little bit of um, magenta. I'm adding the violet to this. This area right here. I'm getting some of those little voids, dark voids in there. In here, over here, I wish that was a softer edge. These are a little shocking when they're a little contrasty. And then, so we have a big ball of foliage here, like right underneath it. I'll hit some ultramarine blue and magenta. You know, I, I think it's just, it's a lot more blue than you think.
see some green, blue, gray, green in there. So just a little Prussian and a little lemon. He really eases up on when he, when he has a lot of light in the background. He doesn't make it so dark. You could have made these branches a lot darker. These are not very dark when I'm putting down. It's good. It's, if you love painting nature, it's a really good idea to study how artists how other artists do their branches. And many artists have very different ways of doing them. It's also really interesting to see what he does with these little voids. So sky coming through here. So I place the branches in there. I think what happens is that somebody, somebody like this, who's done so many of these paintings, um, real, real, you know, they, they'll look at what they're they're seeing, but then they just take it into their own their own method because they're so they, they've got ways of doing all of these things. They'll so they'll look at a a bunch of like a a, a way to handle like a big foliage area. And they'll just handle it in a way that, that has worked for them many times. Um, so you only get that by doing lots and lots and lots of paintings because that's, you'll develop your little thing. It works for you. And sometimes you, you get They'll even do a, a, something really good, you know, but you'll, it leaves you kind of dry. And you're thinking, gosh, you know, I think I could do this my way.
my shadows are a little bit more contrasted. Of course, my road is, I don't have anything on the road yet. Same thing, color shadow. Taking it into the base of this bush there. And just look at the base of everything. You know, they'll have something dark down there. And I'll just. And then my color actually came out to light, so put another color back over it. I'll put something over this road. Sort of a light tone. You sort of the stage it a little bit, a little, little darker on here. Leaving your eye into the painting. We're just using a little bit of water on. See how that diffuses it into the light. Oh, looks like there's another shadow coming in. There must be a tree back here. Nice. Okay, I'll let that dry first. My fence in. A couple of other little guys in there. Little fun. these little ones. I was using my thrasher brush. <laughs> I don't know why I was using that. Got to get Henry's thinner brush here. Sometimes with a fine line, you just got to have something with a nice tip.
a little bit of shadow on the left side. Make that a little darker. I see another one coming in from the outside here. It's very light. Oh. I like it because it kind of walks us back in space. And then uh, what else? I already did a little bit more of these deep colors in here. I let it dry up a little bit. Um, again, orange with a little bit of a little bit of blue. How to do it. Deeper tone. As usual, it's watercolor, so I wanted to do, you know, more local masters this time, but it doesn't mean we can't do some big, great masters as well. I just sort of wanted to, we were kind of doing that. I just wanted to do a little bit more. Um, this time. So some of you have been asking, are we going to do it with Picasso or Matisse? You know I loved him. But they didn't do watercolor. Yeah, I know. Well, all the other did. Well. Then I'd known for it, but I mean, sure. I'm sure Picasso's like, why would I want to do a watercolor when I can make, you know? <laughs> this oil right here I can make, like, you can put that castle with it over there. Yeah. So I, I got this a good value, but then my, my sky is really quite light now, I can see. But see, now if I put the blue in now, the orange will creep in on it and, and ruin the color, so I'll wait for that to dry. It doesn't have to be totally dry, it just has to be dry enough to where it won't, it won't jump into the color too much. There's supposed to be some blue right there, oh well. Some.
I don't know if I can get that. But sometimes, you know, if you use uh, like a scraping tool, it gets quite, quite dark behind it. Some little silhouettes back there. It makes it easy to really jump out. I was going to put a subtle glaze over those too. Oh yeah, if you can, you can do it with white. Yeah. Sometimes though, let's see if I have a brush like this. Sometimes brushes have this on the end, like a little thing. But you can scrape it with all kinds of things, but th this can work really nice. Yeah, that's how I did it. Yeah. Probably some some sort of tool like that. You don't always use your fingernail. I mean, if they, if they work, go ahead, but I don't know why mine weren't working. This have to be semi wet though. And if it's too wet, the paint will just creep right back in on it and you'll lose the line. If it's too dry, it won't it won't really come off. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. I'm gonna come back here with a little bit deeper blue. He's even grayer than that, wow. Darker and grayer. Oh, 
Okay. That's what I did. Articulating a few things. A little dark here. A few things to stand out a little bit more. Well, you got to get those grasses, huh? Gosh, I forgot all about them. What am I doing? Oh, looks like just I'm looking at it up close. It's just like a like a bunch of abstraction. Let's see if that's too dark. Oops. Yeah, it's a little too dark. Little. Some subtle branches and interesting little shadows. And another way to get a branch to stand out too is just by putting some darker around it. darker ones. I like how we get some little, the dark little pockets. You can see little spots of them. So guys, that's really one of his little signatures. I doubt that. Everybody does it different. See, he pokes these little light holes in there and he pokes these little dark holes in there too. He gets a lot of relief out of it.
I think he just kind of comes in here with some of medium tones. Gives it a <clears throat> a little variety in the color, a little variety in the value. I see a little warmth and cools moving on in there. They're pretty subtle. Branches and then a little oh, uh, leaf shapes. that blue in there. I'm just mixing, uh, I actually mixed the ultramarine and the Prussian together. So it came out a little bit on the green side. I was looking for something grayer and I was hoping that the, the green and the Prussian blue will sort of gray the violet in the ultramarine blue. Because one has red in it, one has like green in it. And the hope here is that that'll, when it dries, hopefully it'll dry um, a little the, uh, no, we'll see how it dries. But the ultramarine gives you a really nice little surprise when it dries. It gives you this rich velvety color. This is the time I just think about edges. You're at that point in the painting when you're mostly thinking about edges. Probably either finished or you're overdoing it. <laughs>
Little blue patches of shadows in there. A little bit darker. So I just throw the tone on there like that, and then just take some water and just feed it into it. Yeah. And it'll just blend its way up. Oh, why do you think? Yeah. Oh. So how about um, a few minutes to take pictures of your work and send it in? Um, let's see. About uh, five minutes. So it's forty. How about forty five? Okay. Oh, it's really green. But maybe I've a little, put a little too much pressure in there. Oh well. Mm -hmm. There it is. I hope that dried nice. Okay.
Okay, we got a few. What's wrong, everybody? I almost turned it off. Whoops, how the head is. Okay. Oh, with sun, sorry. Nice, Cindy. Look at that. You're getting a lot of um, a lot of uh, atmospheric depth out of this it, because of your more defined brush strokes in the foreground. You know, of course, a lot more red. It just pushes everything back. So even though you got a red back here. It's got a soft edge and it's a bit grayer, you know, it looks a quarter of a mile later, so. This is nice and loose. How are you doing? Are you there? No, oh, yes, I'm here. Oh, I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We, we like listening to you talk to yourself. I talked to myself for like three hours straight. <laughs> I really like this brain tray. Oh, wait. Sorry, I was talking to myself again. Um, actually, yeah, this, this diagonal is nice. So you just painted around it, huh? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And any problems or? I need to find some more interesting neutrals. He really has some lovely colors, and I just have sort of a boring. You know, so what I do is make yourself up a. How about like two or three different oranges? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then beside that, have two or three different blues. Just just different variations of, of them. And then try mixing variations of them. And they'll look almost identical. And you put them next to each other, and they look very different. Weird. Okay. Yeah, but that's, that's what I do. And I think uh, maybe the, the light part of your foliage up here could be a little darker, which is great. I mean, I'd probably just let that dry up and glaze some color into that later. Okay. But when you do that, you might find that your sky needs to go darker. <laughs> yes. I've darkened the sky twice now. Oh, you did? Oh, yes. Oh, we'll it see. Keeps, it, it, but it, it just lightens up all the time. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that's, that's, you know how it is. When you change a color, then, oh my gosh, now I gotta change this color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Very nice work. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Teresa. Oh, great. Wow. Very, very simple. You know, if you look at what Teresa's doing here, everyone, she, see how she, almost all of her foliage looks like one big mass? See that? It's just all one big mass that goes from sort of a blue gray area into these orangey grays into the more saturated colors for the top. That's a great solution. Sometimes on the edges, like, uh, let's see, you're doing what I was doing, you know, like, you get these sort of cut out looking edges and he mm -hmm. does do that as well but he also has some soft edges in there too so every once in a while maybe just take a little water around the edge oh. and get a little soft edge as, 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 as well as some hard edges he's just a master at edges yeah sometimes there's no time to do it oh i know I well know. what in the center and the side already dry <laughs> yeah that's one nice fence you got there. Wow. You paint a, you paint a nice fence. 
<laughs> it looks big. And, and these trees in the background are great. So, but you know, you did miss out on this, uh, the big white branch, you know, mm -hmm. this one here. So um, unfortunately, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Um, maybe no. And it wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he waited for the whole thing to dry and then put him in because they do look almost like an afterthought or something mm -hmm. that he put in later. So it wouldn't surprise me at all. He just looked at it and he goes, you know, I just need something here. So he might have dampened the area after it was dry. It just came back and dampened the area and then, and then just took out a little bit of a, a little diagonal in there. Yeah. So it's no big deal. Look, these trees are great. And then what I like to do with them is maybe hit a little, not this dark, but it's just hit some of these little negative areas in there. So you yeah. see to play, play with a little edge here and there. And it takes us. There, there, isn't, there isn't enough time, that's for sure. But this, but this is a wonderful, really, really good, really good copy. Good study. Thank you. Yeah. Love the dry brushing you did here on the trunks. That's great. She, she, what I admire about this one is that she has simplified it enough so she can do it in the amount of time. She really simplified this thing, yeah. You no, know, because it's a, I think it's a much bigger piece than we're working on. And boy, there was oh. a lot going on. It's beautiful. Oh. I, I like think it. she did it. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Lily. Oh, here we go. All right. Not easy, huh? <laughs> easy, yeah. Oh, it's a piece of cake. No problem. Um, oh, okay. So now, let's try this here. You see how your fence is kind of going uphill a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes it feel like it's more on a hill. And, you know, and it could be. Oh, but okay. His particular one is, this was a little more flat here. Mm -hmm. Maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. so, so they get, so the fence is a little bit more, and that's, that's what will make it feel, um, Like, like it's going back in space. Because here's your horizon right back here, right? So actually, it'd be mm -hmm. higher. Mm -hmm. Right. Or we could pull your horizon down a little bit lower, whatever we do. But uh, so let's just say your, your horizon's around there. Yeah, that would work. Um, so the, the fence had, the, the fence itself actually is basically the only thing out of uh, perspective, really. Right. The expenses can do that, so. Mm -hmm. I would take some of this red right here, reddish color. I would take some of this color here and pull a little bit behind there. Mm, okay. But by the way, you see how it kind of goes downhill too? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, I might flatten that out because that's going to make this feel like it's on a thing or whatever. Um, I look for things like that. Mm -hmm. Just take a little bit behind here. Okay. And yeah, that 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 shadow on the left side of the tree hit it nice and hard. Mm -hmm. It's not this dark, but you know, hit it nice and dark so we really we can really see the side. So just taking what you've already done and make and just go over a little bit darker. Make it darker, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And then anything else you want to add to it. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't redo the fence. I would just, you know, I, I just want you to know that if you're wondering why the perspective looks, and this is totally normal. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it's because these are, this one's kind of leaning that way. And then this is kind of leaning that way. When, when it would be a little more straight up and down and the top is actually almost, it's almost flat. It'll throw you though. Perspective throws everybody, okay? Okay. Okie dokie. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Nice study. I'm definitely not an easy one. But that's why we study. Learn how to do those things. So another really simple solution here. Taking these big masses and just simplifying them. Yeah, and you're starting to get some branches in there, but we'll get some branches in there. Um, I basically, don't, I don't think I have any branches in yet. <laughs> we just <Okay>. one, <laughs> couple. That's something I do, and then oh, you know, nice looking edges. These are these are that's like a percy gray edge right there. Um. So so he. The way you handle the whole mass here, and then just give it a couple of little edges, and that's what he does. And they don't look too hard edged either, which is nice. You got some nice soft edges. Uh, I would increase the saturation of the color here up in the foreground. Yeah, yeah. It got kind of muddy. I just, got muddy. Got too well, muddy. he, you know, he he plays in the mud. That's what he does. Oh, He's a muddy <laughs> painter. That's what tonalism is. Tonalism is mud. I mean, so yeah. So just uh, just think, you know, even though they 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 really use a lot of muted colors, they'll still pump up the saturation in these areas, you know, in the closest areas to our eyes. Yeah, I I, I need a lot more layers, especially up in the foliage. It's just not dark enough. I think I use too much water up there. <laughs> Yeah, just let it dry. Yeah, yeah. Might surprise me if that's what he does. Um, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't hit these that saturated, but maybe a little more saturated than what's back here. Okay. So no pop forward. And I know there's I no, very little shadow on them, but what was that? Oh, I just, I need to let everything just dry. And, yeah. You know, I need to you know, just, I need to hit darks and all kinds of stuff. But I just I was excited to to try this one because it's just um, you know you were talking about he's he's very tonal, but I have it on I have the photo on my iPad and I kind of blew up section and just within certain areas it just looks like it's you know sort of a solid color. It's not. There's just so much beautiful darks going on. It's just wow. It just well, amazes me. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's quite an amazing painter, no question. To do to do it for that long too, wow. What a what a career. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that someone else? Who is this? Oh, there you go. Is this Helen? There you go. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. There you go. Okay. See, so you're grasping the idea of using the whole map. What we want. Look, you've got the nice looking sky, nice looking background colors. I love all the the water drops too. The little what do you call them? The little blooms back there. So those are nice. And so 
we can come back into some of this stuff. And he does get bluer in there too, yeah. Um, with some more oranges and some, you know, some good looking orange right up in here. Actually, the grass looks really good, yeah. Um, and I think this tree could use a little more orange on it, maybe. So sometimes when you when you get a lot of like see how this this tree almost doesn't feel like it's attached to the ground yet. So I would just 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 connect that shadow a little bit more. That's all. Like this one is. This one feels good. Little things like that, you know, in a, in a painting like this make a big difference. I see your little lights there. Very nice. Very nice. And what do you think? What 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 did, what, did, what did you think of this painting? Was it I think I, did, I have a hard time to uh, look at the between just to copy what you did and I look at the real reference yeah. photo. So sometimes got lost in it. Like I want to do what you're teaching, but uh -huh. uh, there, if I don't look at reference photo, become purely copy. Sometimes could go wrong the placement. So yeah. I should mainly look at the reference photo or. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'll be able to just remember you have the uh, recording too, because it's it's really hard to do everything. But usually, you know, I'm demonstrating uh, to give you ideas. Maybe maybe you're looking at an area and you go, oh, okay. Well, that's how we handle it. Okay, I'll try that or something like that. But you don't have to like step by step follow everything I do, because that's. Um, that's a little hard when you're working from the photograph and me at the same time. So you'll find you'll find your way on how to do it. Every most people just kind of do it in their own way, and then they might refer to mine for um, just to see how I handle an area. You can also refer to the um, to the recording to do the same thing later. Okay not bad i would darken the sky a little bit up here like on the top a little bit and keep it light down here but just just up here a little bit more just a little bit just a little bit darker and then it fades to something lighter down here a little, a little bit Okie dokie. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll just keep taking it one step at a time. Uh, let's see. Phoebe. All right. So you scratched into it. Look at that. Yeah, the darker one really set that off. Got some nice tones up here. Very kind of rusty, muted tones up there. I mean, I think they would be a little bit darker. Definitely. Maybe a, maybe some like some of these. Every time we do yeah. these, I, I think I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> I do too. I do too. <laughs> oh, I think it needed a lot of time between layers. Maybe not, but to me it seemed like that. You know, by the way, uh, I, I might suggest actually if you're going to do another one, maybe to do another one by instead of this. Good idea. Because I love his work. Yeah. I had forgotten about it, but um, oh, he's so great. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're breathtaking. They're really, he really, really knows how to, um, I don't know, communicate in that abstract language of art. He knows it all too, really. He's using every device. He does it all the time and he does it with fluency, just, just absolute um, unconscious 
because it's almost second nature for them. I love the tone, uh, tonality too. It's a bit like um, yeah, the Wachtel um, thing oh, yeah. we did of hers. Um, yeah, that makes sense because yeah, she can be quite tonalist as well. She she has a lot of sides to her. Yeah, and she can be quite quite colorful or quite tonalist. But uh, these are great colors. I love the um, violet over here, the blue. The yellow, the gray, the, the right, the right side. I I lost patience and I just swiped. Here, a little swipe in there. Yeah. <laughs> you could take a little bit of this violet here and maybe dab it to the bottom. Oh yeah. Or the kind of reddish thing over there, and that crap over here. Um. Anyway, nice looking copy. Yeah. Thank you. I do believe so. Yes. Okay. And Christine. All right. Okay. All right. We've got a lovely looking painting here. Got some nice, nice warm tones up in there. And then it gets like freezing cold here. So maybe what I would do is take some of these oranges into this blue, because I think this blue here is supposed to be the shadow of the orange fully. So easy enough, I would glaze some of this, maybe some of this tone right here, kind of orangey or like a sienna, um, into some of these. And then it obviously gets a lot bluer as it gets lower. So then maybe up in here, maybe glaze some of those warmer tones into it. I think that would balance it out. Okay, I found it so startling in the painting, but pretty. But yeah, it is. It, yeah. Yeah, I just felt totally out of my depth. Here. <laughs> well, that's why we do them. You know, how do they do these things? And then we, we just take it from there. Yeah, I'd like to be able to do the foliage the way he, the, you know, the tops of the trees with all those different colors outlining all the different layers and all of that. But you just copy it. Yeah. That, that's, that's one of the best ways to learn. You know, some of these artists are so intimidating. Um, you know, some of these Baroque masters doing all those figures and how do you do that? You know, well, master copies is the way we've always learned. But probably is the best way. Of course, you know, learning all the fundamentals and whatever as well, but nothing, there's no substitute for copying masters. There we go. Yeah, I think we're still a little light up in here. Maybe I think your tones of color right right around here are perfect. I would take some of these up in here, a, a little darker, okay. maybe a little darker here. And then you may find that you have to go, after you do that, you may find you have to get a little darker with the sky up in here. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see. But I, see the way you did this, you, you just based in that big mass there, you based in this big mass. These are all done in like one swipe of the brush, basically, or just a couple. Yeah. And that's good. That's good stuff. That's that's very, very much um, a watercolor way of leaping. So, and but one thing I would do just really quick is. Uh, you see how these shadows kind of moving outwards? Yeah, it's in the wrong direction. Straight. Yeah. Just straight, just flat. Yeah. yeah. And then again, like connected to the tree. Mm -hmm. Connected to the tree. And then it'll, it'll really ground the trees. Maybe back here too, just. Yeah, it took me a while to me. figure out that those were supposed to be shadows. Yeah. Because <laughs> they were blue. They were such a pretty blue. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they need to be connected. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. And there's George. Hello. Hey, George. Good job, George. Oh, thank you. You put a signature right in the middle of the road. Well, for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Let's see here. There we go. 
Uh, great handling of the masses. Wow, look at your your lights over the darks and then your darks over the lights. Yeah. Smacking those darks. Ow, ow, ow. And this little dark that you're using at the base here is really grounding your trees very nicely. Yeah. And the blues in the mountains, I mean, you're pushing it more. But can you see how by pushing the blue in things that are far away, it makes them feel far away, you know, even mm -hmm. if it isn't actually that blue, by pushing it, you see that it, yeah. you get the distance out of it. That's the peacock blue. Oh, okay. It's just something about, even an intense blue can really look far away. It's a way to get away with some saturated color with a lot of distance, because most of the time in the distance, things are really gray. Um, and, and they are really gray, but for some reason, when you throw something blue back there, it's, it, it, as long as you get the value right, it really works. So this is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. And nice blue shadows on the ground. What color blue are you using for the shadows on the ground? That's a veritator blue, a Holbein color. Wow. I, I, how do you say that? <laughs> v, uh, I think it's V E R T I D I T E R. Um, right. I've, I've seen that green. I've never seen it in blue. Oh, okay. Ver, Verditor? 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 I am going to get the tube out right now. Okay. Yeah, okay. V E R D I T E R blue. Okay. Wow. It, yeah. And it's sort of like a purplish blue. Okay. It's great for shadows and clouds. Yeah. Hmm. Looks almost like it's got a little cobalt in it or something, but I can't really tell. Yeah. Well, anyway. Very nice looking piece. Nice looking shadows. The reds come forward. The blues recede. You, you decided to keep a lot of open, you could really see all the way through. I think that's a nice little move there. Yeah. Huh. It just sort of the way it turned out. Yeah. Oh, it's good to me. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, George. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Helen. Okay. Yeah. I'm not done. <laughs> You're not done? <laughs> I try to do the large That's funny. section with the color, you know, the large blotches of color. I, I need to I need to have some t-shirts that say you can order them on my webpage. They say, I'm not done. I know that's and I'll put that in my message, but you know I never finish. I'm getting it. I'm not done yet. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, so you your your coloration is great. Now, actually, your values are pretty darn good in the mountains back here. Okay. So I think, and this is a good way to do things, to, just to come in and, and even though you know the value is too light, right. just come in and fade in your colors first. Right. And then, and then work on value. Right. So you're giving yourself a little order. Yeah. Uh, things you're the way you're working that, that's fine. Uh -huh. Speed is not speed is the least important thing. And it's the first thing amateurs or people that just don't look at art very much. Uh -huh. It's the first thing they'll ask you, how long did that take you? <laughs> yeah. The other thing I always get is how much do you charge for that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but when I'm out painting, you know, people that you, you know, you can you can tell they don't know too much about art, they'll 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 constantly, how long did that take you? How long did I take you? Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's really, I guess in commercial art, you know, where you have to make a lot of money by mm -hmm. volume, you know, it, it helps to be really fast. Yeah. Other than that, uh, no, it doesn't matter. And yeah. I'm retired, so yeah. <laughs> I'm retired. As long as you want. Yeah, no, I, and I love this. It's such, such a beautiful piece. Yeah. I just love, really love this work. So it's really neat to see a new artist for me. Yeah. So what I'll recommend here now is just, you know, obviously going back into, and I like the way you're setting up your shadow shapes around these holes. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Set up your shadow shapes if you like, and, and then right. 
glazing that deep grayish orange up in here. And, and what about the fence, Rob? Um, should it start? This is going a little uphill. So I need to start it a little. But, but see, your horizon's actually looking pretty darn good. So what I would do is take an area out. You know, I, I think that the top of the um, fence, I mean. So just to have it start higher and bigger? I think I would do it about like this. Um, I would put it, I put it about there and okay. make sure it's, it can go a little uphill, but it doesn't have to be totally flat. I don't think that would look right, but a little bit uphill, kind of like the road is, and then maybe about something like that, and then you know, right, and nice they'll get a little closer together. Okay. You know, they'll get a little further away. Right. Maybe not that close, but this this is helpful, Rob, because when I went to draw, I kept making it going uphill, and. But it's really almost along the horizon line. Great. The top, the top of it. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe the horizons, you know, back, yeah, you know, back there or something. Yeah, it, it's pretty darn yeah. close. Yeah. On it's the other hand, too. you know, the perspective of your road looks pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have any real issues going on there. Yeah, but, but so, it's, it's really deceptive on my eyes. That fence. Oh yeah, you know, perspective is. Perspective throws everybody. Yeah. They have some good good perspective here though. And then here. Thanks. So it's gotta do the fence right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fences will fences do that. You know, any man-made structure will do that. Yeah. So okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And John. John, hey. Wow, kapow too. Look at the Texture. No, are you are you using a sponge or anything? Or what are you doing? Yeah, I, I, mean, I used a little bit of a. I, I did the masses, like a big underpainting. Yeah. And then I, I came in with a, a little bit of a plastic bag. Ah, tricky. And then and then softened it once I did the, you know, did the imprint. Well, you're getting some nice looking texture and look at it. real rusty looking colors too. Like Sorry, this is so loud. Yeah, let's, let's make sure we're muted, everyone, okay? And then, and see, the other trick way you can do, everyone, if, you, um, if you're having any issues with the perspective, just leave the fence out. <laughs> that, 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 I was thinking that when you guys were just talking about that. I'm like, that's exactly why I didn't do the fence. <laughs> hey, there you, well, hey, you know what? I mean, I keep, how many artists have done that? I, Every artist does that. There's enough going on in here. I didn't want to struggle with that. Exactly, right? <laughs> so, and there's enough perspective already that's taking you back. And you don't, maybe you just don't feel like you need a fence in there. Actually, I like your trees back there quite a bit. You went more of the eucalyptus type. And these hills, too, they're more dramatic. Feels like Gorman. <laughs> if yeah. back there. Yeah. Crazy hills back there. Um, and yours? You got a lot of fall looking color here. Yeah, um, it's the season, right? Now, because you have blue in your road, it will begin to feel sort of riverish. Yeah, I was looking at that. So now, well, if you want to get creative, uh, you could take a little of your river, I mean, a little of your, your, uh, come on, here we go. You could take, throw a couple little reflections in there. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, cool. That could work. That's that's what I do in, in uh, if I wanted to, if I wanted that. Um, I think I got to put shadows in on the trees. For, I forgot to do that. And, uh, oh, on the ground. Ground, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll that'll definitely ground the trees. Yeah. I, I put it right over the water. And, right. And try to make sure they're not going like now this this almost feels like it's on a slope. So it's possible that it could actually kind of go like that, but give a little contour to it, yeah. But uh uh what I'm trying to say is just just 
get a feel for your terrain. Yeah, these, these almost do feel like they're going downhill. I mean, this is flat, so, yeah. so make sure it's flat and not going like downhill. Right. Yeah. In this particular case, because of the, looks like the light is coming right from me. And by the way, that's another thing of most California impressions, if you look, the light will be on one side and the shadows will be going in another direction. Um, most of the time, not all the time, but it's a very common thing to have this light on one side so the shadows are going, so they're halfway in between the light and shadow, in other words. So the lights are on the right side, the shadows are going to the left. Um, that's, that's really common in, in just all of Impressionism, really. Because they want to see those shadows, they want to make a big issue out of them. And, and, and that's so half, sitting halfway in between the light and shadow will give you really, really good shadows. Anyway. Oh, well, very nice. Um, any questions or? No, this was a really cool uh, picture. I love that. I'm, I'm not familiar with the artist, so thank you for turning me on. Yeah. Because uh, it's, uh, it's some cool stuff. Yeah, and this particular this particular image was really striking with the the color palette and everything, and the you know the depth of yeah. it all. Yeah, yeah I cool. saw that. And I saw that orange and blue, and I said, "Oh, that would be a fun. That would be a lot of fun. I think everybody would like that." So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Oops. Let's go to the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to take a. Well, again, I, I didn't, good I didn't. The side. You want to come back to you? Uh, sure. I, I'll adjust it right now. Okay. Ooh, nice one, Gail. What do you think? Do you like this one? Uh, you know, I, I like the bottom. I uh, sky holes uh, in the upper left. I thought, uh, so I I like to take over. Them. In the upper left. Well, what do you? What don't you like about them? Does it doesn't look realistic. I don't know. Did they get too gray on you, maybe? Uh, yeah, maybe too muddy. I don't know. Um, because you can always sort of let it dry and then blot it. I mean, let it dry, add a little water, and then blot it, and then add a little bit more color. Because I noticed the colors up there, even in his, are pretty, they're kind of muted. So I already did that, but I didn't do it enough. So uh, you can always add white. Oh, yeah. That's just nice. And there you are with your broken technique. I love it. Even your mountains. I love the white that you show on your mountain. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like you used like a wax or something. You know, I I, I like how you just leave that. Yeah, it looks very fresh that way. And the way you're kind of weaving in your shadows. Love the shadow in the foreground. Love that. It's just so delicate and kind of fragmented. <clears throat> but it really hugs the terrain very nicely. I think they look more like you can lift this tree. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah. Yeah, they, they look like you collect this. Um, yeah, I like what you're doing with the sides here too. Always doing the same thing, coming in with some, like you have this dark showing off the tree because it's up against the light. And then you have a light over here and it's up against something a little bit darker. So that's why that tree really shows up. Dark on light, light on dark. I keep playing with things like that. Right, shooting little things right through here. These little abstract leaf shapes. I might include a few more up in here. Look for them. Um, and that's about it, I think. It's a really nice one. Oh, thank you. And you always get your style in there. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Okay, Suzanne. That's a beauty, Suzanne. What do you think? Thanks. And perspective, too. It was very fun. I still don't have the masses right, so I kind of keep going over and 
Um, well, then you have a, this is a, a really good way to handle the math right here. You, you threw it in, you got the light, and then the medium values with a little saturation in them, and then they go into the shadows, leaving yourself some nice little light areas to show some light branches. You got dark on light there, and then you got, I mean, so you got light on dark there, and then right here you got the dark on light there. Very, very nice. Um, so what, what didn't you like about your foliage? Well, I kept, I mean, I, it's, I just sort of do it again and again and again, and I, I keep adding more colors to it, and then you get blooms, but I'm afraid if I keep up with this wow. technique, I'm going to end up with mud. So <laughs> yeah. I don't like my approach to getting there. Uh, I would suggest maybe you're using too many glazes or too many steps. Yeah, right. I, that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why it gets so wet. Now, the other way, get yourself a hair dryer and just hit, every time you hit one of those, really dry it and then go to the next step. Okay. You get the murkiness. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good old hair dryer. <laughs> I mean, if you're impatient, you know, and you really got to get into the, you're trying to accomplish something like, let's say, um, you're trying to do like, let's say, five steps. Uh huh. Um, yeah, you might want to do that. Okay. Do it with a hair dryer. Okay. I really, really uh, love. I love how you're. Uh, Trees recede into this bluish, and they could just come forward, getting more saturated and more saturated. And then again, you're hitting more saturation down here and up here. Good. I mean, you got it. Well, it's very fun. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And let's go. Okay. Here we go. Hi. <laughs> right. More contrast up here pulls it forward. And I would look for areas where you can see, like I think on the side of the tree, I yeah, was hitting quite a bit of contrast there. Um, maybe connect the shadow a little bit more. I love, I love your different <laughs> terrain now. Um, Okay. Oh, you're saying that the shadow on the tree is too obvious. It's too too dark. I would go. No, no. I would go. Uh, I would connect it up a little bit darker, like up in here. Oops. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Just, and maybe down here too. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. A little bit more. You might. Even, I don't even know if it's. I don't. How dark it is back here, but maybe a little bit more. And this one looks pretty darn good. This, I think this is your, that's my favorite. Mm -hmm, thank um, you. And I, I get a little more shadow over here. Just, just a little mm -hmm. corner, uh, a little bit on the ground. I just connect these mm -hmm. a little bit more. Okay. Um, yeah, just so they're more, a little more connected. Blues, blue mountains look great. And any any issues you're having? Uh, you, you you said that uh, he does he does uh, well on edges. Yeah, and I really didn't have time to uh, treat the edges. Um, how do I? I would, how would I make make edges? Your edges mm -hmm. actually look pretty darn good. I mean, you, you have a lot yeah. of soft edges. Um, mostly for people with really hard edges, I was saying that they should soften them. But if, if anything, I, I, um, I would come back and uh, maybe find a little more edges. You know, maybe, and I do that by hardening the edge a little bit. So hardening. Like, yeah, I might actually come back in here and actually
you know, so it, so it holds together as a mass. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually solidifying <clears throat> your edge a little bit more. It's not very, you don't have very, not very many places though. And so, um, overall, the mass of the tree is uh, maybe a little darker. That, that's yeah. Uh, some of these up in here, these yeah. these ones up here, I, I would I, I like I the color I'm using here, but it's not dark mm -hmm. enough. So let me try this. Mm -hmm. Is this dark enough? Probably not. But definitely darker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that goes right over a lot of the things you're doing. And so mm -hmm. that, will, that won't ruin what you've done. That'll just bring it together a little bit more. But a lot of the highlights, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll dull the highlights a little bit more. Mm -hmm. so, so we're- Oh, keeping, I see, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're keeping the mass a little bit more. Yes. It's just a, a master of, of mass. Master mouse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that looks uh, better. Yeah, yeah just, just a kind of a yeah. uh, burnt sienna glaze over it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, All right. Okay, I turned this thing because it's like how not to do the trees. Uh, you wanna you wanna show everybody how not to do it? Yeah, yeah. But I, I like some of it, so I turned it in anyway. You have some interesting things going on here. I know. Uh, I know. I'm just interesting, you know, whatever. I couldn't just get the trees right, and so I just started getting frustrated and obviously I just started doing that. But um that's so uh, anyway I turned it in. Yeah, that's cool. Now you you know you you do have some nice looking um uh, let's just see here real quick. I'll use the uh yeah. so you see how these sort of take us uphill. Yeah. And that could have it, it could be on it, you know. It is now. But yeah, I, I was like, how come that happened? Well, yeah, now you put your horizon line down here, that's why. Um, so the horizon line is, is down here, okay. and that's why it feels like it, that that's on the hill. It, it, it's possible, it could be. I mean, uh, Sure, it is now, yeah. yeah. But, so, um, so the horizon line should have been lower. Uh, is that well, way? I think the horizon line's in the right spot. Oh, okay. I think. The, the road right here probably should have ended around here. Oh, okay. And then these come out that way. So, so, so what, you know? Right. What know. matters is what yep. you learned out of the, yeah, yeah. Is what you learned out of the piece. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see now. Come on. And we have some. Nice looking color, no question about it. Um, the sky, I might, yeah, it got a little dark on you. Yeah, I started using a lot of different blues. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, they're too bold a to color, too. I know that. I mean, it's like I just never painted so light before. Yeah. It's like either it was too watery or it was too much. So I tried to go somewhere in the middle and yeah. it was just not, you know, like I said, some of it is okay. So there's that, the, there's the, the technical and then there's the, uh, you know, the emotional. So the techni <laughs> technically, you know, I would probably not use as much water. Yeah. And, and, and get a hair dryer, you know. <laughs> Right, yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, uh, an old hair dryer from a you know a yard sale or something, whatever. If you maybe you have one out in the garage or whatever. I'll... Oh, I have them. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. what am I talking? Who am I talking to here? I, I know, right? I forgot. <laughs> you have, probably have enough hair dryers for the whole class. Oh yeah. 
COVID yeah. vaccine. Yeah, so yeah, some kind of hair dryer would work. And that'll, um, what happens is that we'll put a color down and then it's drying a little differently than we want it to or whatever. So we'll put something else down and then before it dries and then they'll mix and then, oh, so. Yeah. It's chuffy. Anyway. Anyway. Well, thank you. Nice work. Well, sort of, but some of it is. But um, yeah, I'm, anyway, it was fun lesson. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I, I really, I really like how your mountains and your foliage, and then all this comes forward. Um, if anything, you may, if, if you're looking, if you hit some more reds, darker reds up in here in the foreground, uh -huh. for those grasses or whatever, and try to make them redder than these reds. It'll get more, even more distance out of it. So I see. Yeah, make it bolder. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. And Jay, oops, where's the next one, right? There it is. Oh, is that the same one? Okay. All right. And you got some nice looking, like, I can see your masses very clearly. Um, great looking perspective. Yeah, These look, this looks really flat in that road. I mean, the fence is a little low, right? This, this is a little uphill. You know, one thing you can do to correct this really quick, I mean, it's, it's a small yes. thing. <laughs> It's just, you see how all your mount your um, um let me use a better color here your your trees are kind of going off this way and your mountains are kind of going off this way so they're all pointing downhill yes so just take this color add a little bit more okay. you're just taking this color and adding a little bit more to it and so i think the one above it's just fine and then on on these trees here Oops, I a clear door. Um, that's a beautiful tree, by the way. Thank you. I would just take a couple more, maybe up, up a little higher. Okay. You know, something like that, and uh, that'll make it feel flatter. Okay. I mean, you look at these trees; they're beautiful. The way, look at the, this red in front of this gray. You got this mountain. I mean, I wouldn't change that at all. Um, and then, I mean, I wouldn't redo that fence. I mean, technically, you know, if you want to be really technical here, you know, because you have this very clear, so the fence would probably fit in line with that. Or, and this does feel a little bit like it's on a hill too, because you have this. This would be the horizon, but this one you have a horizon down here. Now, what's wrong with it being on a hill? I don't care. I mean, it looks right to me. It certainly could be like that. I've seen things just like this. My mom okay. lives in my mom lives in a place where there's a lot of things are like this. I don't know. So if I raise the fence on the left hand side a little bit. I wouldn't do that. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, so I would just raise some trees here a little bit, possibly. And that's all if you want it flat. I'll, I'll let you deal with that. Um, make a decision on that. This man, I could frame that right there. That looks like a painting. Thank you. A painting within a painting. This maybe got a little dark on you. What do you think? Yes, I kept trying to get some. Yeah, it got too dark. So I might just just wet it and blot it a little bit. Okay. okay. These colors are wonderful. I mean, this is exactly what I was seeing out there. Um, Maybe the sky's a little bit on the light side. So that's what is it? Just a quick glaze will take care of that. Okay. A little bit deeper on these these top. Leave them light down here though. Okay, right. just darker. All right. Dark, darker, darker, just something lighter and lighter and lighter. Yeah. Okay. Because if you look at his, the sky is very close to the value of the orange. It's very, they're very close. 
One, one's not that much lighter than the other. It's just a little bit. I think probably, maybe a little darker with the shadows on the trees. Okay. Um, it's a pretty solid shadow on that tree. And then let's see. On the ground, maybe it just a touch darker and bluer. Okay. Everything else is great. That's a, that looks like a California Impressionist piece to me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, anything you want to do with the edges too, as well. Like, you know, he, he gets in here and puts in little leaf shapes and whatever, you know, you know, he does that. Right. You got these ones very nice. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Right. Love this. Great. Thank you. All right. And there's Henry. Hi, Rob. There it is. Okay, great. All right. Nice looking work. Mercy Green. Um, lot of, you get a lot of depth out of this. Now, not only is, is he keeping things a little bluer and grayer back here, but also look at the soft edges. The soft edges will will make it recede. So, great, great move, great move back there. Thank you. Looks totally effortless. This whole painting looks totally effortless. Oh, it's a lot of effort for sure. <laughs> it's really challenging. There's a lot of effort into making it look effortless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what they used to say about Sargent, by the way. Uh -huh. uh, I, I heard that, that there's a saying that he, a lot of times when he's trying to get that brush stroke, that one beautiful brush stroke, he would redo it and redo it and redo it. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a uh, whole lot overdoing during the work. That's yeah. Uh, right, lot more contrast up in here. Nice dark shadow. Uh -huh. And and hardly any contrast back there, which gives us more more depth. Okay. Nice. I I did darken the uh, the sky holes on top uh, based on your comment to, uh, on the yeah. uh, last uh, painting. Uh, yeah. And they, I don't know, they probably wouldn't be that dark, but uh, just a little bit darker than now. He can, he can, he actually gets pretty dark with this area. Uh huh. Yeah, I think uh, maybe also, huh? Okay. So if, if that's the case, then when you put that around there, then it starts looking really light. Yeah. So I don't know. So I, I it's really a tonalist painting. Yes, uh, it is. I, yeah. I, I thought the yellow is lighter than the sky. Then I, uh, I turned the original into black and white in Photoshop. I see yeah. the contrast of the tree actually is much darker than the sky. For some reason, uh, my eye just is deceived. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you darken this, you may feel like you might want to darken these. Uh -huh. And yeah. I think his are a little bit on the grayer side. Yeah. Let me put some yellow over there. Hold on. Yeah. That's a little too gray. But... I'm more <laughs> maybe impressionistic color, uh, too sunny. I, uh, yeah. I mean, they, they call they call them California impressionists, but some of them are California tonalists. Well. Tonalists, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a question: If, if yeah. the tonalists do the mono uh, mono chromatic, or what they call this monotonal yeah. <laughs> study for uh, painting for underpainting? First, like oh, the, what they do that first. That's a good question. Because That's the classical, possible. yeah, the classical uh, British watercolors to uh, always start with a tonal painting, like, a, oh. and then they glaze uh, or transparent watercolor on so top. That's why their colors come out so muted. I, 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 I was uh, thinking about that, but uh, not wasn't sure if he did that on all his paintings. I think, especially the English, would, would do a uh, monochromatic underpainting, yes. Okay. Does he do that? I really don't think so. Okay. But 
Hey, I could be wrong. That's a, uh, a, diff a different uh, style than tonalist, right? That's more yeah. classical. Okay. Rob? Yeah. A, a tonalist uses muted colors. Is that really what a tonalist is? Yeah. And, and oftentimes they'll, they'll paint things that don't have such dramatic lights and shadows like, like the Impressionist. Uh -huh. Okay, more subtle things, you know, even overcast every day, or really, what's this artist's name? There's a contemporary artist whose uh, grandfather was a California Impressionist. But really, I would call him a California Tonalist. And it, mm. he's got an Italian name, uh, I can't remember. Mm. But I forget, anyway, even this contemporary artist, who's still alive today, I think, um, is is a tonalist through and through and really great mm. i just i can't think of his name off the head i'll, I'll uh, i thought it would jump in my head but it didn't i'll, I'll keep an eye out for him and maybe okay. Be, okay thanks to your guy oh chapman Chat, Chat, russell chatham or something like that. yeah that's what it is all right i'll get it to you he, he's a he's a uh tonalist who works today which you won't really find very many of them mm -hmm. Chatham or something like that. And he doesn't work in watercolor. Not that I know of. He might. But... Oh, I'll, I'll show you a couple of them. Um, uh, Malcolm Whitkey as well. Okay. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you, Rob. Wonderful day. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank and I, love you. Your, I love your suggestions, you by the way. Thank Monty, you gave me some really good suggestions on uh, on artists, so I really appreciate that. Uh, okay, go Dodgers tonight! <laughs> Bye. <laughs> go blue! Go oh, blue! All right. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 B